Okay, hello. This is Malcolm Rose. And today, what I think I'm going to do is a Draconian. This is one of my favorite races. Um, I definitely think that it's a great race to start with as a newbie. If you haven't tried it, you probably should. Um, generally, it's just it's just one of those things where it's taking away some of the randomness in the game, and I think that's always a good thing. And what I mean by that is, you get armor class every time you level up. Unfortunately, it doesn't really come along with any GDR, at least I don't think it does, uh, unless you're in dragon form, but that's another story entirely. However, just having the AC is nice. Um, especially since, let's say you want to play a caster, now you've got a pretty decent armor class without messing with your cast ability. And so, what I think is that if you'd like to play casters, you're new to it, but you're not really sure how, or maybe you have a problem surviving with a caster, Draconian's a really good place to start. I mean, you could do Gargoyle, Earth Elementalist, I suppose, to get a similar sort of game. But I think Draconian is actually better because here's my favorite thing to do with these guys. Start with a DRCJ. And so we'll just start training spellcasting and conjurations. We start with Magic Dart memorized, and we have these spells at our disposal. Now, Conjurer kind of took a hit recently, well, relatively recently, I suppose. They used to have this really awesome spell, um, Battle Sphere, which was a real staple, you know, for Conjurers. But that's gone. And so what we're going to use instead is so we're just going to kind of focus on Magic Dart for a while. We'll train spellcasting and conjurations so that we get more spell power and we get more magic points. And um, I'm a little concerned about all these hallways. <laughs> I just know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be walking and there's going to be like some guy with a venom dagger next to me or a, you know, an adder. Let's, uh, let's shout once. It's not ideal to shout on level 1, usually, but I really want to lure things into the hallway. Now, this is okay. I'm going to hit him with a dart, and then I'm going to back up. Okay, cool. Dart doesn't really make much damage. I will pick up this stone, and I'll wield the dagger. So yeah, the basic plan here is, um, here's the cool thing about Draconians. At level 7, they get a color, and the color changes your aptitudes. And so if you go Conjurer, that gives you the unique proposition of training Conjuration for a while, and then once you find out what your color is, if your color gives you a bonus to a particular sort of magic, Maybe it now behooves you to go for that. Always like to find sleeping things. Although, with magic dart, you're guaranteed to hit anyway. you notice we do make a little bit of noise with this spell. And if we wanted to make less noise, we could throw this stone we found. As you can see, it makes no noise at all. So that's something to consider. We probably should have. Now we're backing up away from this guy because we didn't kill him. I don't want to. I don't want to swing on him if I can avoid it. There we go. Because if I swing on him, that gives him a chance to hit me. Whereas if I keep walking away, he doesn't really get a chance to hit me unless I'm using magic rather than walking. We're already doing pretty nicely on potions. We have three unidentified potions. I'll throw the stone. He shouted. That's a little concerning. There we go. Oh. 
Got some stuff over here. Didn't notice us. That's good. We were able to kill the cockroach without engaging with the iguana. That's good. Or gecko, I suppose they're called. We'll back up a bit. And we'll hit them with darts. The darts, of course, can do zero damage. So don't assume just because it always hits that it's always going to damage. We found some needles. We'll want to remember that those are there just in case we find a blowgun. But chances are good we won't really be using that. Sling bullets. That's interesting. Definitely possible to miscast. Let's walk backwards for a bit. Get all of our mana back. This is not ideal, him being so close to us. But the magic dart kills him, and now we get to level 2. A significant power boost for a caster. Let's go ahead and memorize Searing Ray. This spell is interesting. Well, how it works is you use two mana to cast it originally, since it's a level 2 spell. Um, let's actually back up a bit and then shout. And this way we get the full range. Now, Searing Ray can only go this far. That's three, three, one, two, three, four squares. So it behooves us to instead Magic Dart for a while if something is far away from us. Searing Ray will do more damage, and I'll show you why in a moment. You'll notice we already have 4 AC, even though we're wearing nothing. Hey, a ring. I'm tempted to wear ID that, because... Um... A ring is less likely to be able to mess with us, because if it's minus slay, then, um, well, slaying isn't really a big deal to us, but I'm not going to, because it could always be teleport or something stupid. Oops, I should have searing raid there. We'll wait until I'm at five mana, running away. And cock away. Our cockroach is a little bit fast. Am I doing this wrong? Giant cockroach. Oh, so they are. All right, my mistake. Um, not good to walk away from cockroaches if you're um, trying to guarantee you don't get hit. So let's use, we use two mana for the ray. All right, it misses. Now we hit um, the dot button and we see that it shot again, costing us one mana now we've got Ray Plus. If I do it again, if I hit Dot again, I get a third blast, and then I also get a fourth one, which is full power. And at some point in there, I think it's the, after the second one, it will actually act as a bolt, and it will go through things, damaging stuff behind it. So if you are inadvertently next to something and you really need to kill it, and it's not um, something that's prone to moving around like a bat, you are... You are um, not making a mistake if you searing ray it, most likely. I am auto-exploring now since we have a little bit more wiggle room, although it's not ideal. As I kind of said before, um, I think I alluded to this at least, uh, the problem with avoiding auto-exploring is that, well, for me, I end up making a mistake anyway uh, half the time so I really only have the patience to avoid auto exploring until I get to like a couple levels I, I was extraordinarily careful about it with the octopode uh, but you know I think even there I may have made some mistakes all right we can search for d1 and we see that we've cleared it of anything that's useful to us right now and so we go down uh, now that we have the luxury of a um, staircase, let's shout and see what comes back. Nothing. 
Uh, but stuff does come. It just doesn't make noise back at us. We've got a bat and a python, which we kill. Shot again. Nothing seems to be coming back. That's good to see. Sort of. Okay, seems like we've cleared this little tiny corner at least. I like using shouting as a tactical tool, especially around corners. You hear a shout, cool. And here comes the hobgoblin. We'll searing ray him. And he dies. And this is one way, a bit dangerous since it can pull things to you um, in a way that, like a lot of, it can pull a lot of things to you is what I'm saying. More than you would like. Oh, there was a jackal and it fell down the shaft. Whoops. One, two, three. There we go. The ray kills it. Yeah, see, we're getting quite a lot of stuff coming at us now. Um, more than we would like to fight. And I am running into darkness now, which is not a good thing, so let's just throw a rock and finish him off. And of course, as a caster, we will put our points into intelligence. Uh, shouting a bit, not getting any shouts back. Most of the things that I'd be particularly afraid of here would shout back at me. Like right now I'm afraid of things with uh, ego weapons, things with um, like a knoll with a halberd even. Um, I'm also afraid of adders, but a little bit less so than I normally would be um, because magic dart is an excellent tool for killing adders since it bypasses their evasion. That's not to say I would like to see an adder, I really wouldn't. Is that a worm I saw? Popped in and out of view instantly. Two, three, four. See, that searing ray is very, very powerful. Once it gets to the top. Oops. Gotta make sure your ray doesn't miscast. Uh, we're going to swing on this guy and then finish him off with a magic dart. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll go back to D1 and we'll start identifying some of these scrolls by read IDing them. Uh, recharge, that's wasted. Identify, good. The reason why we go back here is... Um, in case it's teleport. We don't want to teleport somewhere unknown on this floor. Okay, we'll back up a bit. Okay, we're gonna actually move forward since he doesn't see us and we're going to, now that he's in range, we'll go into dart range, or um, ray range rather, and we'll kill him with those because it's faster. He gets less opportunities to shoot his little darts at us. Auto exploring a bit. Again, it's not optimal. You should not really auto explore at all if you're playing a truly optimal game. It's just in the interest of making this video um, tolerable to watch, I suppose. Okay, that's another floor down. Looks like we haven't found anything of value yet still. I see some arrows. Um, maybe I'll... You know, next game... I've talked so much smack about how good bows are. I think next game I might play like a hoo-hoo or something. Some kind of hunter. Okay, we got an orc. I'll throw a rock at him to open up. corpse so we can we can eat. Spell hunger is a little bit of a problem, but we're training up as fast as we can. I think we may go for Vehumet or something. Here we go. This is interesting. 
We've got a ghost, a very weak ghost. Um, this is a nice pile of experience, if we can kill it, which we probably cannot. But he can only do 100, 100, he can only do 11 damage. So um, it wouldn't be the end of the world if he got next to us. So we're going to let that happen. One, unfortunately, this one's going to be wasted. Two, three, and four. Uh, he hits us for a lot. We're going to go up. Wow. Ooh, wow. That's not fun. Uh, it said he disappeared, so we'll go back down. We're just going to have to avoid him. We can't kill him right now. Oh, no. Wow. Okay, well, we're in a little bit of trouble now. Um... We just fell through one of those wonderful things called shafts for three floors from D3 to D6. Hands down, the most dangerous part of the game to hit a shaft. I can't say I'm happy about this. Uh, no, I cannot say I'm happy about this at all. But at the very least, we do have potions of curing identified. Um, so, And that's probably heal potions, those three yellow ones. But we need to find an upstairs, and we need to find it fast. This just got real. Okay, it looks like we have a little room here. Hmm, which door? I certainly don't want to play the shouting game. I want to pick up this trident, actually, and wear it, but it might be cursed. Um, I'm going to do it. Okay, good. And I'm gonna I'm gonna risk wearing these rings because I have so many scrolls. Once probably remove curse. Okay, intelligence resist corrosion. Good. Good. Okay. All right, we found a staircase up. We'll take it. We have a lot of nastiness over here. We'll probably. Whoa! The server is shutting down. The game has been saved. Um, what's what's going on here? Um, hmm. Interesting. Well, it looks like this is... Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I guess the JGR went down. Okay, that's cool. I'll just end the video here then. Uh, I'll either make another one um, and just put them together or possibly um, I don't know maybe I'll just um, make it in like a two-part video or two two videos so um, yeah that's your cliffhanger until I make it to lair until next time